Ash. Taryn Renee. Hello. Hi. <laughs> um, I have a fact for you that's very interesting. Ooh, hit me and with disgusting. It. Did you know that your feet typically produce a pint of sweat every single day? Oh my god. Ew. Ew. Where does it go? Yuck. Where does it go? Your socks. And then it just dries and soaks and dries yep. and so all day. Ew. Oh, I hate this. I hate this a lot. Where does it go? Oh my god, no. I what? Why Where do we does have it to go? Start? Why do we have to start episodes out with this? I'm unwell. Because I'm unwell. It's a brain teaser and a crowd pleaser. <laughs> Today's episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. They have so many different features, but in their podcast section, they have things that me and Ash have been loving. For instance, you can connect your social media accounts, display posts from your social media profiles on your website, automatically push website content to your favorite social media channels so your followers can share it too. You can also see how your visits, unique visitors, and page views trend over time. Gain insight into the top traffic sources, products, device types, browsers, and operating systems by visits. And you own all of the content that you put on Squarespace's platform. So head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash advice to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Again, and that's squarespace.com slash advice. Today's episode is brought to you by ZocDoc. ZocDoc is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient reviewed, take your insurance, and are available when you need them. Find the doctor that is right for you and book an appointment that works for your schedule. Every month, millions of people use ZocDoc, and I'm one of them. It's my go-to whenever I need to find and book a doctor. I don't know about you guys, but I get super overwhelmed when I'm trying to find a doctor, and how do you know who's the right one, what they specialize in. Like it gets super confusing. So I love using ZocDoc to read up on local doctors, get verified patient reviews and see what other real humans had to say about their visit. Go to ZocDoc.com slash advice and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C.com slash advice. ZocDoc.com slash advice. Today's episode is brought to you by Best Fiends. Best Fiends is a mobile puzzle game that anyone can download and play. Whether you have a few minutes or a few hours, Best Fiends is the perfect puzzle game to lose yourself in because you're having so much fun. The game features tons of cute characters that help you solve thousands of fun puzzles. The more you play, the more characters you collect. And the more you win, the more challenges you face. My favorite thing is they have thousands of levels, so you literally can play a as long as you want and never get bored. Download Best Fiends free today on the App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R. Best Fiends. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Unsolicited Advice. I'm Ashley. That's Taryn. We are here to advise you on all of your life issues. Um, how have you been, Taryn? Guys. I'm great. Taryn, if you... Remember from last week's episode, uh, Taryn has moved out. We yes. have lived together for over three years. Yes. And she officially moved out. This is her first Monday where, like, we didn't, like, wake up and drive here together. Yep. Like, she came over from her house to yes. my house. And then we drove over. So, yes, we still drove together. <laughs> she- I mean, I feel, I like, feel I'm like that's always the plan. Yeah, yeah, that's just the case. It's going to be the plan. it's different. So, like, on our way here today, we were, like, catching each other up on how our week's been. And yes. I was like, this is weird. But also familiar, because that's how we did it when we first started this podcast. Yeah. I feel like it's funny. Like, I was... I was sad. Like, I definitely cried. Actually, my, my mom was there, and she took... The, the most cutest photo. precious photo of us like crying and hugging. Um, I'll, we'll totally put it up on the Insta. But um, I I was sad because it's changed and like mm-hmm. 
for the things like I'm not going to be able to just, like just walk across the hall and you're there. And just all the good memories. Yeah, the good memories, everything. But I think like this is like just a good chapter in all of our lives like we're all shifting so it feels like exciting yeah and then also like it's bringing back memories of like us when we like first became friends and we yeah. just be like what are you doing like yeah what do you want to do hey. you want to hang out want to go to dinner like <laughs> what are you doing right now when it comes to the night yeah. like and so that's kind of been like nostalgic and exciting too mm-hmm um, I love I love my place. It's been so fun living with my brother. It's so cute. Um, so yeah, I'm like thriving. I'm doing I love really this. well. Yeah. I love this so much. This is it's been fun, and I think I don't know. Change can be scary, but at the same time, just so fun, so yeah. fun and exciting. I and think it's too, good like, change if you handle it right. Like yeah. it, it was like. I feel like we all, it was handled in a really good way. There's a lot of like yes. open communication and just like support. And yeah, yeah it's just, it's been great. Wow. But I was like so excited to see you today. <laughs> like, I was guys, like, tell me coming. everything. What are Tarrant's you doing? coming. I was like, I saw your story about this. What was that about? What are you doing? <laughs> what like, was tell happening? me everything. I, yeah. I need to know. <laughs> it was great. It was great. How about you, Ash? Um, How are you doing? You know, doing good. Doing good. Um, I have since, you know, since Taryn left, I took her closet. <laughs> Yes. I the day you left, I was like, okay, all my coats, like all the coats I own yeah. went from cuz I to paint a picture, I couldn't walk in my closet. Which at all. like it you, was bad. You guys should know this by now. Ash is a very like her room is always clean and organized and even like when I walked in, I was like, "Ash, your closet." And she was like, "I'm not well." I'm, I, I'm not was, well. It was bad cuz what happened is I had bought in a couple coats for this winter for mm-hmm. like snowboarding, snowboarding and yeah. winter and whatever. And then like I just get gifted clothes and I yeah. love it. It's great. Um, but I don't, I just don't have the room for it. Yeah. So it, what's, what's happened is I've gotten into a good pattern of just like deep cleaning my closet, donating it every few months. Yeah. Um, but, but we were at a spot where it was like a really rough spot. Too much, yeah. So I, I went through, got rid of a bunch of clothes and then all my coats went into Taryn's closet. So I now have a coat closet in Taryn's room. Yeah, you do. Uh, and it's been, it's been good. I still, that room is completely empty. We need to yeah. like make the bed and get a dresser and like little yeah. things like that mm-hmm. but very excited it's gonna be very fun um and yeah just fun changes yeah fun I love changes. that you still called it Taryn's room I hope it's always Taryn's room what do we call it you know <laughs> the room of the room. she who must not be named <laughs> um well you know I wanted to switch it up on you Ash and I'd love to take the tearing it up section oh my god I love I love this because this is good I was productive and read emails before nice. 20 minutes before the episode so um i'm prepared so much okay. growth so much growth <laughs> you know this this moving out has really <laughs> changed a lot also if you don't me. know what a tearing it up is tearing it up is a specific segment where you guys send in funny hilarious stories um so if you are sitting on a funny story that's happened to you recently an awkward one an embarrassing one maybe it didn't happen to you it happened to a friend and you witnessed mm-hmm. it please take this moment to sit down type it up in an email and send it to us because we yes. love tearing it up so we live for the laughter and uh oh, yeah. yes very excited yes. for it so do that about it um okay so this one is titled i could probably go to jail which i was like (laughs) i'm interested color me intrigued hello ashley and taryn i love y'all so much i never realized how much i needed to work on myself until i started listening to you guys same it All wasn't we're trying until... to do is expose your weaknesses. <laughs> it wasn't until I started the podcast that I was like, I got some work to do on myself. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me advising Me too. people and being like, mm, going self-check. home, like, wait. Mental note for <laughs> I yourself. don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, anyway, my name is Lauren and this is the most stressful slash embarrassing moment of my life. So I'm at work and it's super slow. We had a total of 10 people come in and it was like four o'clock at this point. For context, I work at a car wash and it was raining that day. We usually have four people closed together and that day we only had two, me and my coworker Joey. We were getting bored and I was getting thirsty. Joey asked me to get a speaker out of his truck. He said it was already unlocked and both the items were in the center console. The employees need to park so far away, so I told him I'd go get it if he bought me something from the vending machine. 
He agreed, and so I went. Lord help me. Mm-hmm. I walk up to his truck. I open it up. I grab the wallet and the speaker, and I walk back to the building and put Joey's stuff on the counter in the break room. He asked me if I wanted to DJ, so I paired my phone to his speaker. I could not pair the speaker for the life of me, and eventually I asked for his help. He told me the speaker's name was Joey's Music, but the name wasn't popping up. I eventually got tired of waiting and gave up. I told Joey to play whatever music he wanted through his phone. I asked if I could take a dollar to go get a soda, and he asked me to hand him his wallet and speaker. Once I handed it to him, he froze and started (gasps) laughing. Lauren, I said, my speaker and my wallet. Confused, I just stared at him. He realized I was being serious and just stared at me. After a second, his face just drops and he asks, Lauren, what truck did you get this stuff (gasps) out of? I told him it was the gray truck parked next to my car. He says, Lauren, my truck is white. (laughs) No. I legit almost peed myself. I told myself not to panic. Robbery. (laughs) Right? (laughs) I told him that I'd be back and I'm going to return the stuff. I ran as fast as I could back to the parking spot spots i turned the corner to face two vehicles my car and joey's white truck the gray truck had left (gasps) no (laughs) i just stopped and stared at the empty third spot for like five minutes i slowly walked back to joey and he saw the stuff in my hands and says no shot and starts dying laughing (laughs) i started to cry and freak out and that made him laugh even more I yelled at him to stop laughing at me for I had just broken into a truck and stolen a wallet and speaker and I didn't know how to return it. After a minute, we eventually looked at the man's ID and realized he came through the car wash earlier that day. We eventually found the man and through tears, I I apologized profusely. Luckily, he was extremely nice and told me that this would be a good story for him to tell his family at dinner. And also a reminder to lock your doors. Yes. Come on, people. Also... Who keeps their wallet in this center yeah, console? Yeah. That gives me so much with anxiety. Their car unlocked? Absolutely yeah. not. I'm talking to you too, Joey. She ends with Joey was nice enough to take me to lunch later that week instead of just buying a soda. What a gent. <laughs> the end. Dude. Wow. That's, I I mean, I've heard I've like almost gotten into a car, but I've never like to go in and take stuff. And like, yeah. what are the odds there was a speaker and a wallet in the same? Yeah, that's like, really that's, that's really bizarre. I have a Lexus NX, which is like a black crossover style mm-hmm. car. I went once to a Lexus NX black crossover and completely opened the trunk. And I don't know if it was because my key worked with it or it was unlocked or whatever, but I had a bunch of groceries in my hand and I opened the trunk and I'm looking at it and I'm staring at a stroller. (laughs) And I had a whole like moment where I was like, I don't have a child. (laughs) Yeah, I was, but it was everything else felt right. Like the the trunk looks right. It was, it was a, I keep my trunks usually pretty like decently clean. So it wasn't like cluttered, but there was this like stroller yeah it was so clearly not mine and I sat there for like a good probably like four or five Mississippi seconds before it hit me I closed it and like looked around all panicky and ran away (laughs) but um yeah sometimes that stuff happens but that's that's what blows my mind is when people don't have their cars locked because I have I have such a strong habit of locking my car to the point that I have locked myself out of my car so many times Terry knows because 90% of the time she had to come get me while I waited for the guy to come and break into my car um but I have this automatic habit out of fear of people breaking in because I've gotten my car broken into before so I think maybe that's where it stems from but no it's not people if you take anything away from the story today lock your cars Check the color of the car you're going to mm-hmm. first. Also, I've heard of so many people getting their cars broken into recently. Oof. It's like we're in a crime wave. Yeah. Oof. People. Oof. Lock your cars. Yeah. All that to say. Um, but thank you for writing that in. Send more tearing it ups, more scenarios like this where you're like, what just happened? Like, we need it. We need it for our sanity. We need a good laugh. Yeah. So the other day I was, you know, just admiring my smile in the mirror and I was noticing maybe that coffee is getting my teeth a little bit, you know, not as pearly white as I would like. And so I'm looking into teeth whitening stuff, but I tend to have major sensitivity. And what do you know? We ended up working with Lumino and guys, I'm 
obsessed. One of the things I learned is 98% of oral bacteria is actually good for you. They're essential for your oral health. Turns out the fact that all bacteria are bad is just a myth and Lumino is busting it wide open. Lumino makes toothpaste, mouthwash, and whitening that are a totally new and different approach for improving your oral health. You won't find harsh chemicals or bleaches in any of Lumino's products. Everything is dentist formulated, backed by over 50 studies, and proven to protect the good bacteria also known as the microbiome. Again, because I have sensitive teeth, my favorite thing is that it's only 30 minutes and brightens your smile with no sensitivity. Find Lumino on Amazon.com and get $7 off today. That's L-U-M-I-N-E-U-X. Remember, it's spelled with an X so you can X out the harm. Lumino, dedicated to illuminating better ideas in oral care. Today's episode is brought to you by Factor. Factor makes it easy to eat clean 24-7 with fresh, never-frozen prepared meals that are so delicious you wouldn't believe they're actually good for you. Factor saves time by delivering chef-crafted meals to my doorstep, eliminating the hassle of grocery shopping and meal prep. Not to mention cleanup and no dishes to wash here. <laughs> Factor offers vegan and veggie meals, keto meals, low-calorie options, cold-pressed juices, smoothies, energy bites, plant-based bars, extra protein, veggie sides, and more to keep me fueled and focused all day long. So no matter what kind of nutritional plan you are following, Factor has something for you. And one of my favorite things is that each meal arrives pre-prepared and ready to eat in two minutes. And I'm always rushing out the door, so this is clutch for me. Head to go.factor75.com slash advice120 and use code advice120 to get $120 off. That's code ADVICE120 at go.factor75.com slash advice120 for $120 off. Okay, well, I'm super excited because that means I get to do my story you never first get to today. Go first. I love to do my story first. Yeah. It's my favorite. Yeah. Um, this one is titled Moving In Without a Ring. Moving in without, oh, got it. Without a, if you like it, then you should put a ring on it. But, uh, mm. Yeah. Okay. D- d- <laughs> d- d- Taryn yes. was about to break into the dance. I was. Uh, okay. Diving right in. Hi, Taryn and Ashley. My name is Allie, and you can say it. I just Hello. wanted to start off by saying I love you guys so much, and I'm so thankful for your podcast. The advice you've given on all the past episodes has been so helpful to me, and I'm sure many others. I hope you guys keep it going forever because we all need help. <laughs> damn straight don't I know it girl <laughs> anyway here's my problem dot 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 I love a good dot 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 I use dot dot dots frequently in my text yeah, what are commas I don't know <laughs> Comas? Comas? Comes? Uh, She continues, my boyfriend and I have been dating for six years, starting my senior year of high school. We've been together for a long time, but we're still so young, and he's a year younger than me, too. I've always known he was the one, and we've talked about our future together and getting married, basically our entire relationship. He's set to graduate college in December of 2022, and he's always told me he would propose as soon as he graduates. So... I kind of planned for that timeline. Makes sense. I mean, that's very specific. Yeah. I would plan for that too. <laughs> like, it, it's not even like, hey, oh, I like, might, I let's might both do this. graduate and then we can talk about it. And then we'll it. see. We'll it's reevaluate. Like, I December, what? <laughs> I graduate in December. Look for a ring. <laughs> yeah, that's Three basically to five what he said. Days. <laughs> Three to five business days. <laughs> that makes sense. I would totally plan for it too. She writes, I recently moved into an apartment with my best friend and our lease expires in January of 2023. I thought that would be perfect because he and I would have time to find a place for the two of us after he proposes. I've always told him I need to have a ring before we move in together and he has been very understanding and supportive of that decision. Just a couple of days ago, he told me that his lease is going to expire in May, which is just a few months from now, and that he wants to start looking for places for us. I always thought I would be ecstatic when it came time to move in with him, and while I'm still excited, the stress of all the opposing factors is ruining it. I still have nearly a year left on my lease. It's going to cost me nearly $2,000 to get out of it early. Oof. I'd be abandoning my best friend. I'd obviously have to help her find someone to take over my half of the rent. And on top of that, all caps, we're not engaged. Mm. 
Honestly, the money is a fair amount, but it's not a huge deal to me in the grand scheme of things. I would just feel so guilty leaving my friend and breaking a promise that I made to myself just to help him out with a place to live. I love him so much and can't wait for our future together, but I feel rushed about this and a little bit like he's ignoring my principles. I know I have to have a conversation with him about this and I have to have it soon. I'm just not sure how to bring up something that's so important to me as well as incredibly stressful without making it a sore subject. I know he's going to say, what's the big deal? You know, I'm going to propose. And of course, I believe him, but it's not even about that. It's about the fact that I told him and gave him my standard that I have, and he wants me to lower it and make it easier for him. How do I go about keeping this promise to myself while also keeping him happy? Are there any compromises you guys can suggest? I really appreciate you guys taking the time to read this. Any advice you would have would be seriously so appreciated. I wish you guys all the luck and happiness in the world because you two deserve it. Thank you so much, Allie. Well, wow. first of all, thank you for uh, all the love. I yeah. feel I feel warm and fuzzy inside. Yes. <laughs> Can I just Here's, say something? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> this whole episode, I just keep thinking if my feet are sweating. Oh my God. Bring it back, back, back to the topic, Karen. I'm just very aware of it. I just needed to say it. Okay, but I paid attention. Yes, say something because I have lots to say to you. <laughs> okay, um, here's here's where my nine self is going to come in. Okay, I fully understand both sides. I get him going. Oh, if I'm going to propose in December, which is roughly like five six months away from May half a year like why how can I find a place for six months before yeah wanting to find a place with her so I understand I'm saying this because I think it's easy to see where he's coming from saying I'm going to propose we agreed on this but like six months like what's the difference I understand what he's saying but I think because of him thinking super logically he is forgetting about the fact that He's asking you to break a promise that you made to yourself, a standard that you have for yourself. Um, I think he's taking this way logical and you're taking this as, ooh, that's kind of hurtful. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. So I think, because he sounds like a great guy, he sounds, sounds like you guys have a great relationship. I think you just need to sh- show him the emotional aspect of this. Because I bet he's just thinking, well, let's save money and we're going to get married anyways. And how am I going to find a place for a six month lease? when I'm going to want to find another place with her afterwards anyways. Um, I think you just need to be, I think you just need to remind him of the goal that you set and the standard that you set and help him realize that he's asking you to break that. Cause I bet it hasn't even crossed his mind. Yeah. I wouldn't be shocked. Yeah. I get what you're saying of like where that could be the way he's thinking. And mm-hmm. I think that's why, I think that's why communication is so important because, um, you know, and we we talked about it like I don't even remember one episode where you said the story of like the girl who started communicating to her husband like the story I'm telling myself, right? Yes, yes. Because a lot Renee of times Brown. Renee Brown. A lot of times I love Renee Brown. Me and you even are coming from such different aspects and it's not until you tell me how you're thinking and I tell you how I'm thinking and mm-hmm. then we both sit in our like Oh, yeah. like this makes sense of why we're at this like hiccup. Yeah. And so I do think that is a very surface level like, OK, like looking at it in a triage way. Right. Because I think we all should look at conversations and conflicts this way. Mm-hmm. You you step back and you're like, OK, what like how do I address first this? Right. Like I don't want to just jump in and cut your you open for open heart surgery. Like yeah. what if like. You just need an aspirin. Like, yeah. what if there's a tiny infection we yeah. just need to deal with? So I feel like if I look at this in, like, a triage sense, I would first go there. Like, yeah. okay, let's, like, sit and really, like, try to break down, like, where you're coming from. Yeah. And I said this because I feel like I tend to be more on, like, the very literal, <laughs> very literal yes. sense. And 90% of the time, if me and Taryn have a conflict for whatever reason, I didn't even think about it. 
and how it might hurt her or how it might have affected her emotionally because I'm not thinking about it emotionally. So I think it's important to address that first before having this deep conversation. Yeah. Because what if if that's all it was? Fully. And my job as a person who is in relationship with you is to learn how to hear what you say in your literal sense Mm -hmm. and not take offense to it, but try to understand and then communicate like where I'm coming from, right? Mm, Yeah, and that saves you from dreading a huge conversation that might not even be necessary because you could be like, hey, I don't know if you remember, but I told you I didn't want to move in until we were engaged, like actually engaged, not talking about it, like engaged. Yeah. And he could be like, oh shit, you're right, I'm sorry. Exactly. And what if that's the case? I think like every time I go into a conversation where I'm like, oof, like this is a big deal to me. I always, I always start off light Mm -hmm. and then I kind of, but I have my statements prepared of where I'm going to be like, Hey, if I meet that resistance, then okay. (laughs) Gloves are off. Like now we're going to talk about it. She has her outline part A. Right. And that's when I start. Part C. I understand. Yeah. And then that's when I start coming in. I hear you. I hear you. And I understand where you're coming from. This is why you're wrong. No. (laughs) But I, I do think. There's a few things that stood out to me. One is I think I think there's a lot of things that could be seen as red flags that we ignore in the beginning mm-hmm. of relationships because we rationalize it, right? Mm. If he does know where your heart is, he's hearing your standards and he's just brushing it off because there's something more convenient for him, that is a red flag to me and that's mm-hmm. something to pay attention to because in a healthy relationship, you both are very – there has to be a mutual respect of here's what you're communicating or your needs and your things I need to respect, vice versa. Yeah. I think – that if that is the case, a, a big conversation needs to happen of saying, hey, I've I've let you know where I stand. And that's not a small thing. Like, Mm-mm. there's people who are waiting to have sex till they get married. There's mm-hmm. people who are waiting to be engaged before they get married. Mm-hmm. And there's people who do a multiple, like, array of other things. Waiting to be engaged before they get married. what I say? Oh, before they move in. <laughs> yeah. That's what I meant. That's what I meant. Thank, thank you. I, just, thank I you. knew everyone else no, was no, going to no. say think that I, I had really, to address it. I really appreciate okay. you <laughs> not letting me look stupid for longer than five <laughs> seconds. Um, but that is stuff that, like, when I tell you, hey, I, I want to be engaged before I move in with someone. Mm-hmm. If I tell you that, that's something that I made a decision for myself for multiple reasons, whether yeah. it's, like, I, that's my safety net, whether it's like that you're comfortable with. Yeah. And, and for you to like push me past that, I, I think that is something to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. Um, so I definitely think if he's like, Hey, this is not a big deal. This is stupid. Why are we waiting, waiting six months? Then yeah, I think that's where you step up and say, Hey, this to me could co- could possibly be a bigger thing because I'm letting you know the things that I am setting for myself and you're not respecting it. Yeah. So I don't think like it should have to come into this big old thing. But I do think if you talk to him, he still is pushing you. He's making you feel pressured or diminishing what you want and mm-hmm. making you feel stupid about your decision. That's where I think you need to have a bigger conversation with him. Yeah. I think we've gotten really desensitized to how serious it is to live with someone. Yeah. Um, they become your everything. You, you know, you were dating them for six years. Yes, your life was very much entwined. Obviously, that's a long time. But living together, that's very deeply yeah. in- intertwined. And if, God forbid, something happens and it doesn't end well, Oof. that will it's not just a break rip up. your yeah. heart apart. Like yeah. you have completely mixed your life with his and separating that is a lot harder mm. than a simple breakup. Yeah. Um, so I do think it's very important to walk into that very carefully. I wouldn't just live with anyone. And I like that you're taking that you set your goal where you feel comfortable and that you've made that very clear. So Taryn's right. I think if he shows any kind of, if he, if he gives any kind of like sass to you for wanting to wait till you're engaged, like you told him forever ago, then there definitely needs to be some kind of conversation. Yeah. Cause then it's like, okay, well, and why don't are break. we waiting till December? Then propose now. Like, yeah. why am I moving my timeline? Uh, we're this whole timeline was so that you could graduate. Yeah. Because that was a goal you set for yourself. Yeah. 
So this is the standard I set for myself, but we're going to break mine and not yours. Like, yeah, if we're going to get engaged, like, why not do it now? Like, it could go both ways. So him asking you to break yours isn't fair. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do think like there's just multiple things that I think need to happen. And if that's the case, if he's like, hey, I I can't afford to get a place that like we would eventually live with or live in, then I feel like, okay, like. Maybe you move in with your family and get like a rental space. Like maybe you move in with a friend. Maybe you find somewhere that's kind of like not the best, but like does month to month. Like yeah. there's plenty of options, but I just think, I don't know. I get worried when I see people get in relationships and start bending so easily. There's a difference yeah. between compromise and bending. Yeah, Compromise is when you both have different like views, but it's like you find a middle ground. A middle ground, yeah. Because they're both areas that it's like, this is important to me, but also I want to meet you somewhere. And you're open to changing and bending a little bit yeah but still holding strong to your core values but or whatever you those saying are. like you've always said and he you've communicated to him hey i don't want to move in with someone until i'm engaged mm-hmm. that's more than something to be compromised in yeah, my I in agree. my personal opinion but so. i think that's also her opinion i think yeah. she made it very clear like that is something that she wants to hold on to and she's living with her friend like she doesn't want to so there's i mean when i hear your story i'm like oh this like, yeah, a conversation definitely needs to happen. Yeah. So I just think, I think I would go in, not accusatory, not like yeah. whatever, but just hear him Give out him and just be like, the doubt. yeah, he just, could be, you know, a little slow and just didn't realize. Yeah. And be like, like hey, me, <laughs> we've, we've had this talk. This isn't a new thing. And I'm a little confused of what this change has been. Yeah. A clarification and conversation. I just, yeah. I just want to hear where you're coming from and also re-communicate where I'm coming from. just want to remind you. And then I would start slow, but if he starts, like I said, if he starts to be like, oh my God, it's six months, like dismissive, that's where you need to like yeah. step up. I agree. Um, I Oof. love I love this topic. I yeah. feel like we haven't talked about that specific situation. Um, so thank you so much for sharing. I'm sure so many people have been in similar situations yeah. and oh are gosh. sitting here going, oh wait, ooh. Please Please talk to him and write us back of how the conversation went. Yeah, we need, we need an update. I really need to know. Yeah. We need an update. I mean, I need to know updates on everything, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Okay, well, thank you so much for writing in, sending all the positive vibes. Commi- you got but this, baby honestly, girl. Honestly, too, I would, like, I would practice what you're going to say. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, that helps me when I'm like, I'll drive in the car and I'll just turn the music down and I'll literally have the conversation out loud. <laughs> yeah. And it helps me so much because like I'll I'll try to like hear how I'm saying stuff or hear like certain phrases that like really resonated of like, yes, that's my most important thing I want to communicate. Yeah. And then it helps me to just like kind of fish through everything I'm going to say. And then I feel more prepared when I go in. Yes. So I, I don't 100% step agree. in and I'm like, oh, what did I say? Yeah. You know? But yeah, you got this. Everyone, ladies, gentlemen, everybody. Standards are important. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. If you know me at all, you know I am a sucker for a good puzzle game on your phone. It becomes my, like, not only when I'm bored, but, like, my night routine. It helps me to just, like, decompress. And one of the games I have been obsessed with is Best Fiends. I don't want to brag or anything, but I'm already at level 50, so like, I'm kind of a big deal. Best Fiends is a mobile puzzle game that anyone can download and play. Whether you have a few minutes or a few hours, Best Fiends is the perfect puzzle game to lose yourself in because you're having so much fun. New characters and challenging puzzles are added all the time, and there are tons of fun events where you can win huge rewards in the game. With thousands of levels, you can literally play as long as you want and never get bored. And the more you win, the more challenges you face. So come on, like cute characters, multiple challenges, tons of levels, like what more do you need? Download Best Fiends free today on the App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R. Best Fiends. All right, if you are interested in websites, online stores, marketing tools, analytics, or any of the above, then Squarespace is for you as the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. 
me and Ash are big fans of Squarespace because, you know, we have the vision. We don't necessarily have the tools to, you know, carry out our visions. And that is where Squarespace comes in and just makes everything so much easier. Squarespace has the tools you need to get your business off the ground, including e-commerce templates, inventory management, a simple checkout process, and secure payments. You also can connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members only content, manage your members, send email communications and leverage audience insights all on one easy to use platform. One of my favorite things that helps me to just feel connected with the people that are fans of our podcast is you can also traffic your overview and see how your visits, unique visitors and page views trend over time. So head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com com slash advice to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Again, that's squarespace.com slash advice. When it comes to finding a doctor that is best for you, no one knows what you need to look for better than you do. And no one's better than giving you the tools to find the perfect doctor than ZocDoc. The people who created ZocDoc found the major pain points in healthcare, all the things that weren't working and said, that's enough and made booking a great doctor surprisingly pain-free. ZocDoc is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient reviewed, take your insurance and are available when you need them. One of my favorite things about ZocDoc is you can read up on local doctors, get verified patient reviews and see what other real humans had to say about their visit. That is the thing that stresses me out more than anything else, you can go to the many reviews on ZocDoc and figure out who matches your vibe. Go to ZocDoc.com, choose a time slot, and whether you want to see the doctor in person or do a video visit. And just like that, you're booked. Find the doctor that is right for you and book an appointment that works for your schedule. Go to ZocDoc.com slash advice and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash advice, ZocDoc dot com slash advice. I am going to go on to my story. This one is titled, Is It Worth It to Power Through? What is with us in like singing? We should, we should do the, um, you know, where it's like you say a word and then you sing a song. (laughs) I feel like we'd be great at it. Uh, okay. You know what I'm talking about? No. Okay. <laughs> I'll show you later. Okay. It's on the TikTok. Okay. okay. The talk. The talk. Um, is it worth it to power through anxiety for a career? Huh. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Ooh. That Honestly, good. maybe. I'm intrigued. Maybe not. I'm yeah. intrigued. Okay. Hi, Taryn and Ash. Hey. I hope you are both doing well. I just wanted to start by saying that I love this pod so much. I listen it to it every Monday, and I have also gotten my best friend hooked on it, too. Atta you girl. guys are seriously the coolest, and I think you are both so, so wise. Thank you for all that you do. First of all, you not only love hype us. Me up. Hype me up. You not only hype us up, but you're also spreading awareness of the pod. Uh-huh. Like, we love you. Listen. 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 (laughs) Listen, Linda. You're our favorite. Don't tell anyone else. Yeah. Shh. Okay. Here's an intro to me. I'd like to stay anonymous. Your wish is our command. (laughs) Um, I'm a sophomore in college studying mechanical engineering. Get a girl. Right. I am an Enneagram 3 through and through. Oof. Hello. Which, like, if, if you know... The Enneagram. Yeah, fun fact. Taryn and I love the Enneagram. It is a fun personality test that I find to be extremely accurate and a really great tool. Obviously, this isn't science, but it's a really great tool to get to know uh, the people in your life a little bit better and how to live life more uh, efficiently with them and what they need and what they take. A three is a very driven, very powerful, very focused, very career oriented, success oriented person. Um, And they tend to prioritize that over over everything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we know threes. I know a lot of free. I know a lot of freeze. Freeze. I know, we know a lot, a lot of freeze. Um, I love me some work and academic validation. So overachieving and working myself to death comes naturally. 
Anyways, on to my story. When I started college, I began to struggle with anxiety. I missed my dog and I was anxious about my career and my grades. Flash forward to this year, all those feelings from last year are amplified on top of the fact that I've taken too many credits and I'm trying to work three on-campus jobs. They're only five to 10 hours a week each. I know it's a lot, but they are such good opportunities for me to further my career and I couldn't say no which has made my anxiety worse. I've even started to feel a little depressed. There are days where I keep myself busy from the time I wake up to the time I go to sleep, so I just don't have to think because once I start to think, I feel horrible and want to move home. I keep telling myself I should be able to do it all and everyone around me is doing the same thing, so why has it been so hard? I call my mom practically every night and just cry about how much I want to move home and how hard it is. My mom is a therapist, so she is very much all about making sure I'm in a safe space and my mental health is a top priority of hers, which I really appreciate. I know I love that. We talked about a month ago about where I was at and how I need help with my anxiety and stress. I decided I would finish the semester and then take the next year off to focus on my mental health. I felt good about this decision for about two weeks (laughs) and then the Enneagram 3 in me took over. I began to experience FOMO and criticize myself for needing to take a break. Why do I need a break? Everyone around me can do this. What will people think if I take a break? I'm a failure. I'm not good enough. I have to prove everyone and myself that I can do this. If I take a break, all these opportunities in my way will disappear and I'll miss out on so much. Girl a lot of negative Mm self-talk. I've let these thoughts take over the rational part of my brain and now I'm just confused on what to do. It feels like no matter what decision I make, I'll be anxious and disappointed. I really like my major. I'm having so much fun when I'm busy, but once I stop, I don't know what to do. On one hand, I know taking a break would be so beneficial to me because I could focus on my mental health and I would be less busy so I could start going to therapy. But I don't want to miss out on opportunities, let people down or get behind. On the other hand, I could power through my junior year and continue my career, but I could possibly be just as anxious and stressed as I am right now or worse. This brings me to my questions. What advice do you have for me about how I can make the best decision? Should I really be considering taking a break or is it just worth it to power through my anxiety for my career? Anyways, love you too and I hope you're able to give me advice on this situation. Love, Anonymous. Wow. Deep breath. Honestly, I just felt like I needed to breathe after that too. I have, you know, it's, it's so hard because, like, I want to just, like, sit and ask you questions. Uh-huh. Like, to me, this type of scenario is, like, like when a friend comes to me with, like, this, I'm like, all right, like, let's get a list out. Like, let's brainstorm. Like, let's start going through things. Mm-hmm. So I feel like right now, and I don't know if this is a three thing because I feel like I have this conversation with a lot of threes. Mm-hmm. Every problem is this massive, there's a red button and there's a blue button and you have to choose a button and once you push it, you can never return. Yeah. Like, that's it. That's the end. Like So traumatic. Deal with the consequences either yeah. way. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a very all or nothing with threes. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I feel like sometimes it's really helpful to sit with people who are like, what about like the yellow, purple, like yeah. teal? There's like, a lot of gray. There's so yeah. many other. It doesn't buttons have to be here. black and white. Yeah. Because when I first read this, I was like, okay, why don't you take less units? Like, why don't you take like only do like one on campus job? Yeah. Like, why don't you like go to half time and then do therapy, but you're still like involved in yeah. like progressing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so that's where I'm like I wish I was like in person and could talk to you about this anonymous because those would be the questions I'm Clarifying. asking. Yeah. Um because sometimes it's not as helpful for some people to like fully step aside and focus on mental health because they get very wrapped up in like I don't know what I'm doing and it it kind of spirals them more. Mm-hmm. So it just depends who you are. Like yeah. for me I could take a year off and focus on mental health and I would come out a butterfly. Mm-hmm. For other people, like um, like we know Ashley's sister, one of my really good friends, <laughs> ex Rumi, um, <laughs> she's a three. Yeah. When she takes breaks, it's not always the best thing for her because yeah. she doesn't physically know how to like fully take a break. Yes. Yeah. 
So it's it's she always kind of works, so is still tired and didn't works, actually tired. Like, co- make a full comeback. Yeah. So I think that there's multiple options, and I feel like you need to sit with multiple people and just hear how they would handle a situation. Have them ask you questions, write down lists. Like I feel like there should be a big process because I don't know if the answer is just take a full year off or like drown yourself like I feel like there has to be a middle ground no yeah no I completely agree I had a similar obviously I I had a similar situation in college I transferred into a school where I had to minor in theology it was my choice why I don't know but I did it (laughs) I did too I transferred (laughs) in I transferred in halfway through I had two years to complete my entire minor Mm -hmm. which meant I had to double up on all of my Units. Yeah. Like I had no choice, but <laughs> I was also working full time and my parents weren't paying for school. I was paying for school, so I couldn't not work. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I had like my car payment, all those things. And I remember being burnt out and not having enough mental capacity or physical capacity to do it. But I was so close to the end and I had to sit down and be like, this is not sustainable and this isn't okay for the future, but for these next like eight months. Yeah. I'm not breaking. Yeah. I'll sleep when I'm dead mentality. <laughs> like I was yeah. like, I can do that. And then like, then we'll take a break. Then we'll focus on it. But I knew that I could physically get through the very, that last year yeah. because I was like, I can, and I'm just going to buckle down and get it done. If you are at a breaking point and you don't see any, any way to like physically get through it. Cause sometimes you have to, um, then you have to downsize Yeah, is what it is. Um, If that means that you don't graduate at the end of your four years and you have to graduate the following semester, so be it. Like, it's not the end of the world. I think a lot of people... Nobody graduates college on time anymore anyways. Yeah, I think a lot of people have this idea that they have to do it within four years, mm -hmm. and that is not the case. Also, background, like, it took me a full six years to graduate college because I did community college (laughs) before I was eligible to, like, come into the four year because I couldn't afford the four years. So I, I had to make school work for me yeah and there's nothing wrong with that so if that means you you push your grad day like a little bit that's totally fine and I I feel like and this is something that really resonates with my sister taking the time to take care of yourself now means that you'll be able to work more effectively in the future yeah and if what you're doing right now is producing half work are you really happy with that Yeah. Because I bet the three and you hates that oh yeah and if you especially if we're talking school you don't want to be half grades yeah so I would much rather and I'm sure you would much rather cut something out take your time and do it well yeah instead of having to like not successfully do something no yeah I think yeah I think there is like this is a total like you not problem I feel like that sounds weird this is you problem but it is like something where you're gonna have to sit with yourself and be like hey like this is something only you know the answer to like that's what Ash did and she was like I can do this so she did it but not everyone can do that yeah and there was a lot of social things I couldn't yes I went to a school that I had like no not a lot I didn't have I had friends I didn't have a lot of friends yeah (laughs) because I didn't have time to pour into friendships at school or or go to like school events because I was working so it was like I had to drop something and the social aspect of college was it for me yeah I was like no I need the money no for sure (laughs) yeah I would definitely I would definitely just feel it out like Mm -hmm. maybe a semester off like maybe um I go home for a semester and I do online classes. Like maybe I like whatever it is, I would definitely like explore all of your options. Mm -hmm. Like if it literally is just like, I'm curious how far you live from school to home. Cause if it's that, like maybe like weekends you go home and you like do like work from home or like whatever it is Mm -hmm. or Maybe that college isn't meant for you. Like, maybe you need to find a college that's closer to your home. And, like, you know, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's hard for me to give, like, concrete advice because I think there's so many options out there. So I would literally just start to interview all your friends and family and find out what can I do. But no matter what it is, it sounds like you really need to focus on prioritizing your mental health. Like, you got to get into therapy. You got to get... A relaxing hobby like you've got to get like some time in your schedule whatever it is 
you can't continue to just go and hope that your anxiety goes away. Like you have to like do something about it. If you don't take care of it now, it'll come back with a vengeance and take over everything. Yes. Like it'll, it'll bleed into friendships. It'll breed it. Obviously your career, it'll bleed into relationships. Um, it'll take over everything. So it's, it's really important that you prioritize that now before it becomes too big and out of control. Yeah. No, for sure. But yeah, so that would be my advice. I mean, I I hear how much anxiety you have, but I would have that much anxiety too if my options were like that vastly different. Yeah. So I think you just need to really feel it out. Um, If you end up taking a year off, then like take the year off and like don't sit there being like, oh my gosh, my career is going behind, like my schooling is going behind. So many people do it and Mm -hmm. there's not a right or wrong way to do like your path. Like it's your path. So take the pressure off no matter what decision you make like take the pressure off of yourself like you're gonna do it if you have to go to school an extra year well so did all of us so yeah it'll be okay yeah. you know you'll survive um but that would be like I guess my advice for this but I feel like hopefully you hear this and you just take a deep breath and are like okay <laughs> yeah I can do this like mm-hmm. I got this I'll figure it out um but there's lots of people, I feel like, in your shoes, too. Yeah. Oh, it's so common. I took yeah. a year off. I was scared at first, and then I loved it. Yeah. And I came back and was like, okay, I'm going to finish school. Now I'm ready. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I needed I needed to clear my head. It yeah. Was so no, necessary. For sure. for sure. Well, thank you so much, Anonymous, for writing in. Um, we're wishing you the best of luck. You got this. And um, everyone listening, make sure to send in your stories. Uh, follow us on Instagram and all the things because mm-hmm. that's where we, you know, because we're fun get to like hang out with you guys. <laughs> Ash, can I say a dad joke that I know is like so stupid? I mean, I guess depending on who is listening, <laughs> all of them are what? stupid, but this one's so stupid. But I'm gonna say it. <laughs> okay, anyways. let's just do it. Let's do it. What did the zero say to the eight? That belt looks good on you. Oh. <laughs> you mean sash? <laughs> what? No, the belt. Oh, it, it cinches is... it in. Oh, got it, got it. What would well, sash mean? I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm convinced that mm, 30% of the time, you fully, answer I, it as if you know what I'm talking about, yeah. but you weren't really paying attention, but like you get away with it. Like I, I think we're having a conversation, but you're like, yeah, oh, I, yeah. I had a picture in my head that was so wrong. <laughs> it was so wrong. But yeah, that's so yeah. good. That's really good. <laughs> wow, guys. If you made it d- all the way to the dad joke, we love you the mostest. Thank you so much for listening. Yeah. Again, like Taryn said, if you're sitting on a story that you want some advice on or you just want to share a story with us, either way, go ahead and take the time and write it out to us and send it over to us because we want to read it and our listeners would love to hear it. Yeah. Um, we love you guys so much and we'll talk to you in the next episode. Love you. Out Monday. Love Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Today's episode is brought to you by Lumino. Lumino makes toothpaste, mouthwash, and whitening that are a totally new and different approach for improving your oral health. They use purposeful and uncompromising ingredients like sea salt, aloe, and coconut oils to clean and brighten your smile. Plus, everything they make is certified non-toxic. I tend to have sensitive teeth, so my favorite thing about Lumino is it's only 30 minutes to apply and brighten your smile with no sensitivity. Find Lumino on Amazon.com and get $7 off today. That's L-U-M-I-N-E-U-X. Remember, it's spelled with an X so you can X out the harm. Lumino, dedicated to illuminating better ideas in oral care. So recently I just moved and I am definitely stuck in the house a lot, trying to get things unpacked, trying to get to know my new area. And I have been ordering out so much and honestly spending the time in the kitchen to cook meals just like has not been my priority. But luckily I don't have to meal plan or prep and I can still eat well now that I leave my meals to factor. 
Factor makes it so easy to eat clean with fresh, never frozen prepared meals that are so delicious you wouldn't believe they're actually good for you. Factor tackles the tough stuff so I don't have to. Their registered dietitians and expert chefs work hand in hand to create meals with nutritional ingredients. And with more than 29 meal options each week, I'm never bored, which I'm the type that gets super over the same meal every day. So this was so important for me. Factor even goes with your preferences, whether you're vegan or keto, low calorie, and so many other options. They help to keep you fueled and focused all day long. Head to go.factor75.com slash advice120 and use code advice120 to get $120 off. That's code advice120 at go.factor75.com slash advice120 for $120 off.